I'm not going to hold the mic on and try and speak loudly because I uh, I suffer from social anxieties and I consider that to be an aversive stimulus in the situation. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. I'll feign, com- I'll feign confidence. Um, I'd just like to say, Victoria, uh, in your presentation, you talked about um, distinguishing or not distinguishing between positive and uh, punitive, I think was the term, whatever. I think that's incredibly important. Okay? I, I, I have never met... Sorry, my name's Jamie Penrith. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a dog trainer. I was a police officer for 19 years, police dog handler for 10, Association of Pet uh, Dog Trainers UK, member left. Um, foundation degree in canine studies and a few other things as well. Um, what, what I uh, would like to say is that I've never met a dog trainer of any worth whatsoever who wouldn't put their hand up and agree that some form of regulation would be beneficial. I, I think that's across the board. I, I, you know, whether it's the, uh, the person who says you will never see me training dogs, but I do train dogs, or uh, large organisations. I think it's important as well not to lose sight of the, the, the concept of welfare because I think it is very easy to focus on the animal in front of us as being the pinpoint of welfare without looking at the additional limbs as in the way that that animal interacts with the family and the way that that animal then goes on to interact with society and what is expected within laws and within just general social ethical expectations as well. I think context is important. I think it's very important that when we're looking at people um, coming together as as an authoritative body or as as a regulatory process to look at the context in which people operate because uh, training in one uh, flyball agility, he'll work to music, police dogs, you know, scent work, whatever, and somebody else who's training with, I have a lot of work with dogs that, with predatory issues, particularly livestock work. It, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't cross over in terms of um, best practice in a lot of circumstances. In a lot it wouldn't, in a lot of others it wouldn't. So I think it's important that we don't lose sight of what welfare is and what, um, you know, the, the importance of the context uh, when we're talking about training. Joe made a fantastic point about we need people who do. I absolutely agree with that, and I heard murmurs coming from behind as well in, in agreement with that. I think it's very important, as the um, BVA representative said, to have uh, experience and, and qualification, but to say, uh, would we have a 40-year-old or a vet from 40 years who have the present of their experience? We could flip that around and say, would you have a vet with 40 years experience versus someone who's got 10 years of academic qualifications and no hands-on experience? You know, and I think there needs to be an amalgamation and an appreciation of those two areas of training and behaviour modification. But I think ultimately there needs to be... There's no um, uh, disguising the fact that there is a huge rift within the uh, dog training community uh, with regards to uh, people... You know, you join my organisation, you, you, you abide by my code of conduct and you're sort of like wrapped. You know, and this is how you operate. And I think that that can be a beneficial thing, but I think it can be constrictive. So I do think that, yes, regulation is a great idea, but, uh, you know, I think that we, it needs to be a really, really open discussion with context and welfare considered in its truest and largest form. Thank you.